how this primitive streak is formed so please understand this picture here so you can see this is a cut section where you can see the amniotic sac above the yolk sac below and here is the disc the bilaminar germ disc the blue one represents the epiblast and the yellow one represents the hypoblast so you can imagine this is two balloons if you imagine two balloons one blue and yellow and if you take a section here so this is the disc which is see, shown in this picture so where they have taken the cut section of the two balloons they have removed the upper balloon and the lower balloon and now they are focusing only the disc which is having the epiblast and the hypoblast layer so on the layer of epiblast there will be formation of a narrow streak called as primitive streak okay so there will be a narrow line formation which is called as primitive streak so initially this streak won't be much distinguishable not clearly visible so as the growth goes on this streak becomes more clearly visible the now the streak will be converted into a groove which becomes clearly visible so you can see here the streak has become a small groove and having a raised edges on either side so the cranial end of the streak so this is the cranial end as i told the cranial and the caudal orientation is by seeing the precaudal plate at the cranial aspect and the presence of connecting stalk and allantois on the caudal aspect so the cranial aspect of the primitive streak you can see a pit here called has the primitive pit okay so this is the primitive streak then at the cranial end there will be a pit called as primitive pit which is surrounded by a raised margin called as primitive node so the process of gastrulation starts with the formation of primitive streak and there will be formation of primitive node and primitive pit so the cells from the epiblast so here they all not all the cells the few cells of the epiblast they move they migrate towards the primitive streak and they start invaginating so you can see here the cells of the epiblast they migrate towards the primitive streak and they start so if you take a section here at the level of primitive streak and if you turn it so you can see here this is the epiblast layer this is the hypoblast layer exactly at the primitive streak area few of the epiblast cells they start invaginating through the groove so they become flask shaped and they start invaginating and slowly they get detached from the overlying epiblast so you can see here the migration so this process is called as the inward movement of the cells is called as invagination so the cells which are invaginating they become flask shaped and slowly get detached from the overlying epiblast layer then the cells which are detached they displace the cells of the hypoblast so you can see here they are displacing the cells of the hypoblast converting the hypoblast layer into embryonic endoderm then few other cells they start moving laterally and cranially and they form a separate layer between the epiblast and newly formed endoderm and that will be called as intra embryonic mesoderm and the remaining cells present in the epiblast layer will be converted into embryonic ectoderm so this is how the epiblast layer forms a source for the formation of all the three germ layers that is the ectoderm mesoderm and endoderm and the cells which are present in the epiblast have the capacity to form different types of tissues and organs so epiblast is the one which is very much important in the gastrulation and it is a source for the formation of all the three germ layers so this is a streak 
So first morphological sign of gastrulation appears on the surface of the epiblast and they move you can see here caudally in the medial plane and they move towards cranial end and they stop abruptly and there will be formation of primitive pit and primitive node. So this occurs during 15th day of embryonic development. 